Welcome to It's Show Business. This week we have comedian Taylor Tomlinson on. She just put out a fantastic Netflix hour called Quarter Life Crisis. Please check it out. If you haven't already, please subscribe and review the podcast. It's the easiest and fastest way to support us. Thank you so much. Well, Taylor, thanks for doing the pod. I appreciate it. No problem. How's it going, man? It's going good. You know, we're all out here trying to maintain the best we can in this crazy time. Yeah, that's nobody's like, I'm doing great. Like anytime you ask somebody how they're doing, everyone's like, you know, just I'm still here. Um, yeah, I'm alive. Plugging you know? away. Yeah. Yeah. Treading water. Yeah. And the world just gets crazier by the day. But, you know, it's also been great. And I've watched you actually do really um, a lot of content creation, like right from the jump. It felt like you got you and Sam had that series with you and him quarantined. And then you're doing like another pod and another thing. And what was that like? to just start right away. Oh, that was just panic. Oh, yeah, really? that was just sheer panic. Um, going like, oh, we can't get on stage for the next month. And then, you know, within a matter of days, it was like, oh, it's going to be two months. And like, this has just gone on longer and longer. And uh, thank God, in the beginning, we were just like, we got to start doing stuff. Yeah. Um, Because it, it has really felt like, okay, we have to pivot a bit and you know if you had told me three months ago that I was going to have to take off a significant amount of time first off I would have said great I need a month and then if you had told me oh it's going to be three months maybe longer probably longer yeah um I would have said like oh my god that sounds horrible but you know it's also hard because there's no end date so if there was an end date we could all sort of behave accordingly right and maybe i would chill out a bit mm -hmm. if if there was an end date of like okay you can't perform until november 1st right I'd be like all right then i'm just gonna take this time off and do other things or you know see my family from a safe distance or, mm -hmm. or what have you but it's because things change so much every day and you don't know how long it's gonna go on you're like is this just my life now am I going to be able to go back to work for like a month and then have to stop again because things spike? Like you just don't know. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to operate under that level of uncertainty. Um, so what I've just been telling myself is like, okay, just keep making stuff that helps distract people because there's only so many times you can watch a comedy special. Right. <laughs> and, uh, hopefully they still want it once it's safe enough to come out and see you. And I know some places are safer than others and some places are doing shows already. Um, but when we're able to really hopefully get back to normal in whatever a year or so, yeah. you want to be somebody that can sell tickets Yeah, and yeah. you can't just go like, I did a thing. So people will yeah. totally still be on board in 12 to 18 months. You have to keep working. Yeah. So, that's really good foresight because it's also, well, yeah, I did a thing last year, right? If you're just talking a year from now. Yeah. And also, you're with the first person I've had on the pod that said, oh, yeah, when this opens up a year from now, you know, like I, and that's really what it's yeah. going to be like, I think also. It's like, even if it's open in July, August, it's not going to feel normal for at least six months, maybe a year. Cause like, yeah. we're going to be out in these places touching mics, touching people, people. To get that normalcy back, it's going to take a while. It's not just going to be overnight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the the distancing is great because we do we do have to figure out how to go back to working and doing things, but just in a different, safer way. Mm -hmm. Because so many people are out of work, it's not like we can just go. Well, let's just shut every comedy club down forever yeah, yeah. until there's a vaccine. It's like that's so many people out of work. And I just think about clubs that I love so much and the idea of them closing because of this would be so horrible. Um, but yeah, it is going to be different and it's going to be weird and everybody's going to make less money across the board. Yeah. But for, um, for a while, I think for a while. Yeah. But I think I think everybody um, who's like a real diehard stand up is just like, I will perform under any circumstance, as long as it's safe. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm still getting offers for things where I'm like, that doesn't sound super responsible. And right. then those we pass on and that goes for like private events and clubs and whatever else. 
and then there are there are some things that they send you and go okay this is what this club is doing this is a picture of what it looks like mm-hmm. this is what that area is dealing with as far as cases and so it, it really is a case by case situation by situation um deal where you just kind of have to look at a bunch of different things and decide if you're gonna go do it as opposed to six months ago where it was like yeah i have an empty weekend fill yeah, it yeah. with whatever yeah, club. It. Sure, yeah you know? that's actually really yeah. good advice in a way for the venues and other places that are booking talent to be like hey this is all what it is this is the entrance almost like that level of detail to make everyone feel safe, especially the talent to be like, okay, cool. I'm not going to get in trouble. People aren't going to get at me because they came to this thing and caught this virus, et cetera, et cetera. Cause that right. was, how exactly. bad would you feel too, if that happened? So it's like all this so venue bad. responsibility has been almost passed onto the artists. Like it's in a way it's never been before. Yeah. Yeah. And it's tough. I mean, I've heard people talking about it um, with, varying levels of uh tact but (laughs) some people some people are like fuck this i'm going back to my life yeah yeah and then some people are like look i have to work and i have to make a living yeah and i i think the latter is the more understandable realistic response Mm -hmm. um because i think that's the case for for most people right now it's just like all right, I, I get that we have to be safe and we have to flatten this curve and do what we can, but also like I cannot pay my bills. Mm-hmm. And so you, like I really, the only people that I fault right now are just people who are um, taking like unnecessary risks. Like, you know, all those like the Ozark stuff, like the, right, that kind right, of stuff you yeah. see and you're like, really? But like if, even if you're going to see entertainment um, you know, you are supporting people who are working and if you can do it in a safe way, then I think it's, it's totally fine and understandable because everybody's like, you know, we're all stressed and depressed and you mm-hmm. don't want to, you know, you're like, I don't know how long I can live like this, like mental health wise and financially. Right. So I think, for everybody it's really different and it's been really hard um making decisions during this time and developing new skills that before you were kind of like do i really need to learn how to edit and yeah, i'm yeah. Movie? I'm a stand up and now you're like <laughs> i guess you do right i guess you have to figure out how to be like an instagram comedian totally um but you know it's good i mean it's good to learn new things and Absolutely. Uh, diversify there was a point in the music industry where, you know, you could just be an engineer, you could just be a producer, you could just be an artist. And then at some point it switched, we're like, wait, the artists that could do everything had such an advantage over everyone else because they didn't have to wait around. They could just start. Yes. And that's really what we're seeing with comedy now too. The people who can just flip a switch and be like, all right, can't go out. I'm doing this. I'm making content. I'm engaging with my fans. I'm building an audience instead of staying static over this time. It's powerful. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how long I can keep it up. Cut to next week where I'm just like, I quit Instagram and I yeah, just yeah. delete all my social accounts. Uh, but yeah, for right now, just doing, just doing what we can. Yeah. In many ways, like also like you have, I have to say like the ideal career for like a lot of people who are entering comedy, they want the things that you've achieved, like Netflix special, late nights, touring, all those things. What during this process, like on the business side, like caught you off guard? Like, oh, wow, I wasn't thinking about that as I was achieving these milestones in my career. Honestly, I was surprised that Netflix gave me as much control as they did over my hour. Mm -hmm. I was expecting more notes or something. I I wasn't expecting to get to choose everything. So that was a nice, pleasant surprise where there was nobody going like, no, you can't wear that outfit. You have to wear this Mm. outfit or no, you can't perform at that theater. You have to perform at this theater. Like, Ooh, we don't like that joke. Like there was none of that. They just really, you know, they, they looked over stuff in case there was something, but there wasn't at all. And I mean, everything from the name to the location to the jacket I wore, like I really got to do whatever I wanted, which was really nice. And then, um, yeah, of course I've had to do all that business stuff of like, okay, I guess I should get a business manager now, which has been weird. 
um because it's very weird to like give someone all your bank passwords yeah yeah, yeah. and just be like i don't know you but this is your job so yeah it's and a lot it's of trust supposedly safer yeah it's a lot of trust and i don't have much to begin with um so that's weird and yeah getting incorporated which i did much earlier on but yeah yeah and a business manager for those who don't know is basically it's like an accountant plus it's like an accountant but they also like are actively involved in like your planning and managing your finances etc not necessarily yeah. on the investment side, but more just on the, you know, day to day pers- expenses, things coming up, making sure you're following uh, the laws. Because as you tour as a comedian, technically the income is generated in the state you're in. So sometimes mm-hmm. you can have all these different tax returns for like the different states you visit. It can get kind of messy. Oh my gosh, I have so many tax returns. I have like. I get so many documents. Yeah. And the first year that I was full time, I was like, oh, I have to hire an accountant because I can't. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing and I'm getting so many, getting so much mail that looks very official yeah, from so yeah. many different places. Yeah. And there are those firms that uh, capitalize on that. Like when you start a company and you, it becomes like public knowledge and they'll search through and see which companies were founded and start sending you official looking mail to be like, Hey, uh, and at the very bottom, it'll be like, this is not official mail, but it'll like be these bills and stuff and people yeah. get taken advantage of. It's scary. It's really scary. You have your own podcast too, the Self Helpless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been doing Self Helpless, uh, which I do with Delaney Fisher and Kelsey Cook. We've been doing that for about three years now. Mm-hmm. And then Sam and I started a podcast uh, called "This Is Important to Me," where we show each other uh, movies that were important to us, either as kids or adults or whatever that the other person didn't see. Just that thing you do in new relationships, where like you haven't seen this. Oh my god, yeah. this will teach you about who I am. Uh, <laughs> Or you just so make true. each other watch your favorite movies. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that's been really fun. Yeah, that was the first date with my wife was, a, hey, you got to watch this movie. Yeah, what movie was it? It was Casablanca. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Classic. And I'm Moroccan, so as a special thing for me, even though there's not many Moroccans in the movie, but, <laughs> you know, it's 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 a great one. It's a classic, got great lines, and... I've been discovering a lot of movies on like Criterion Channel and like all those old movies I've always been wanting to see. I've just been going through the list now. So that's been nice. Yeah. And you're not We've falling been doing that behind. Too. You know, you're not falling behind yeah. everyone else. So it's great. Yeah. I watched um I checked out your Patreon for your page and you guys have that welcome video. And the Patreon, for those who don't mm-hmm. know, is basically a site where you can support the creators. And I encourage you to support Taylor's Pod and all the other great creators out there. And you have a welcome video and there's this great moment there where you're like, and this is the awkward part where you have to ask for money. Yeah. And it, it is, it is so awkward, especially like, cause you have a lot of visibility, but also to be like, Hey, like support the art too. It's like, it's such a weird dynamic. Cause people always think everyone who's like all of a sudden on TV or on a box is this like mega millionaire. And I know nothing about your finances, but I think, it just becomes this weird disconnect where you're, you're like, I'm still a regular person. I have bills I got to maintain. And so, and, but you still have to connect with your fans and ask for things. It's such a uh, do it yourself culture where we're kind of stuck in this like environment where we have to ask for things, which it feels weird, doesn't it? It feels super weird. And people kind of assume that if you've been on TV at all, you're just like filthy rich. Yeah. Like you're, Lamborghini. you're like, no, not really. Yeah. yeah. yeah you're like, mm, no, like being on late night really doesn't pay that much. And you don't do it that often. And like, even like having a Netflix special, like people just see like Ali Wong and like Amy Schumer and like Dave Chappelle and like those types of offers. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, oh, you think Netflix paid me that? No, like yeah, yeah. not at all. Like there are, there is a huge difference between, you know, what you get paid as like a newer comedian mm-hmm. doing, you know, a similar thing. It's like actors too, you yeah. know, like you hear about like what actors got paid for movies that were like a breakout role for them and made them huge and you're like that's all they made and it's like yeah well they weren't this big person yet like they didn't you know they hadn't proven themselves so now obviously they get paid much differently because they are whoever like they're a name yeah yeah and then yeah then now that now your name helps the movie helps the tv show where before they were helping you so it is this weird s curve in hollywood where it's almost like you're either you're not making any money, like you're not full time. You become full time. You have a little bit of money, and then you get everything. And it's just like a sharp yeah. ramp up. If you make it to that next transition, like you get the sitcom or whatever the next thing, the big tour brings in the big 
the big money, so to speak. Yeah. Or even like writing. I think yeah, writers writing. Are, you know, that's like a steady gig, which, you know, and residuals. is not something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you get exactly. good health insurance. Right. Exactly. And even like doing on the road, like when you start headlining, you're not, you're not making any money. Like a lot of times, like, you know, you're just breaking even or close to it, especially if you're like, you know, paying a feature or something because mm-hmm. you don't want to be alone every weekend. Right. Um, or not pay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just totally, totally dependent on where you're at. Yeah. But this business is very weird. And then there's some people you've never heard of, mm-hmm. but they'll do like a bunch of corporates or cruise ships or yeah. something. And they make so much money, so like much. more than like anybody else who's like a cool kid in Hollywood. And yeah, you're yeah. like, man, should I have done that? Like, I don't know. <laughs> you're just like, I'm sure I mean, you're getting churches. corporate offers because you're, even if you're not 100% clean, you have that perception of being clean. Do I? I don't know if I do anymore. I think it's just my face. I just look kind of wholesome. <laughs> but I'm really. But people would, I, really I would say people would watch your specials and, and be totally fine booking you for corporates. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to see about that, I guess. I'm also just young. Like, I feel like a lot of corporates want like an adult. You know what I mean? Like if you're hiring me for a corporate, that's like a pretty cool company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a startup. Like I did like a hip yeah, I did like a hip greeting card company once and I was like, this is the kind of stuff yeah, yeah. that I should be doing. You know, not like pharmaceuticals. Or I did Yeah, or I did like a corporate that was for like, you know, some fun some uh, organization that helped, you know, get women like ac- free access to you know tampons and stuff and i'm like this is like where yeah. i should be not like brand. it yeah yeah some law firm yeah <laughs> yeah crown and crown <laughs> right yeah exactly yeah but it's part of the like investing in your career like we talk a lot about on this pod about investing investing sometimes that can be in like you know buying a house buying stocks but it's also investing in your career like taking the time to be like all right i gotta invest time money in a camera uh, buying Premiere or whatever you use to edit and investing and spending some time to learn these things so I can build these assets that I own. And that's content that you get to own forever. Yeah. Right. And you have to like, once you get to a certain level, you got to pay like PR company. Oh, yeah. And, you know, if you're paying people to run your social media or like there's all these expenses, like you get to a certain level thinking like, oh, I'm going to make more money. And then you're like, oh, I have to pay my lawyer and my business manager and my agent and my manager. And you're like, Oh, I'm like, and then I have taxes. And so you're like, you know, you make like less than half of what you, the offer is a lot of the time. Totally. I'm reading this great book on Johnny Carson and it starts off with this lawyer who's basically come on to help him. And he starts Mm -hmm. taking on role of like also being the business manager, the accountant and like straightening it out. And he basically finds out that like Johnny Carson has no money. And he's like this huge star with everything. And it's like everything he spends is out the door. He's got an ex-wife, this, that, and the third. And it's, it's such a like fascinating realization that like this can happen at all levels where you feel like money's coming in, but it's going out the door just as fast. Right. Yeah. Thank God I don't have any ex-wives. Yeah. Not yet. To pay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> one can dream yeah goals i always hear comics and other people in hollywood whether they're musicians etc say well if i only had this agent or this manager i would have x y i would have the special i would have the tv spot as someone who has like great management and great representation do you feel that that's the case that they're oh the yeah linchpin? um not always i think i have an exceptional team um and I know that I would not have gotten that special without them. I just know that. And everybody, including my team, is like, no, you got it. And I'm like, mm, like, let's look around at all the amazing people who are so talented and have been doing this so long. And like, the fact of the matter is there are more talented people than there are spots. Mm-hmm. And so for someone like me, especially who's like younger and newer, um, trying to get something that usually goes to established famous people. Right. I think having an amazing team of people, um, both at UTA and levity was like, absolutely the the thing that made all the difference. I mean, I would not have even had the self-esteem to submit for an hour special at this point. I, 
I wanted to submit for the half hour. Mm -hmm. And my manager was the one who was like, just send them your hour. Like your hour is great. And I was like, yeah, but they're not going to give it to me. They're like, so what? At least they'll know that you can do an hour. And then I sent it out and they were like, we think this is good enough and we're going to push for that. I was like, okay, but just tell them I'll do the half. Like, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't like hour or bust. Like I really, I, I just, I totally give them so much credit for, um, believing in me enough and, and convincing the powers that be that I deserved a shot. So I do think, I do think that you can't sit on your ass and expect a manager or an agent to do all the work for you. Um, but I do think that if you're working really hard and you have the goods to back it up and you have an amazing manager or agency or both behind you, yeah, it's just still like, making those calls. Yeah. Making yeah, those calls yeah. and, you know, using their influence as well. Cause like managers and agents, they have their own world just like we do. Yeah. And yeah. they're all established or newer. So if you go with like a newer manager who's hungry, like they might get you stuff, but it's going to be harder for mm-hmm. them because they're, they're still trying to establish themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't have to the trust you. yet. Yeah. Whereas like my team is full of just people who've been doing it for, a long time and right. have bigger clients, honestly, that they can point to and go like, we told you they were going to blow up and they did. Yeah, yeah. So why would you not believe me here? As opposed to getting submitted by a manager who's like, I just got hired as a manager at whatever, whatever company. Mm-hmm. And this is someone I really believe in. And they're like, well, who are you? Right. right. You know? A lot of Hollywood is like, Hey, I'm, you fight to get into the circle. I can't wait till I'm in here. I'm in here. And then like you get in and there's only like five people there. And like that, yes. that's what happens in like management too. It's like the five to 10 people who are calling the shots, they know. And so if you have yes. that trust, it's, it is so important because yeah. everything is trust. Like even from like asking for favors or asking for people to stuff or recommendations, like it's a currency in this town that like is, is, uh, is valuable. And it doesn't take much, like a couple bad recs or a couple bad suggestions, and people are like, "All right, that person doesn't know what they're talking about." Absolutely, one hundred percent. What were some of the things that, like, aside, you know, assuming, you know, you had the talent, obviously, to get the management. Like, what are other qualities that you feel that made you uh, desirable as a client? Like, were you easy to get along with? Did you have a good vision, or like, what what else did you bring to the table besides like having obviously the comedic talent? I think just being pleasant to work with, grateful and having a good work ethic. I think those are the big, the big things that help because you kind of learn that with every job, Mm -hmm. what will get you jobs more than anything else, because there are so many people who are talented at the end of the day, everybody wants to work with people who are nice good people if they can or at least people who are fun (laughs) to hang out with if they're crazy yeah and there are so many you know characters in our business who are just nightmares to work with and you hear those stories and you you know that the industry has like a list of those people Mm -hmm. so i think um i think when it comes to reps they want to work with people who are kind and grateful and they know we're going to work hard and not just sit back and go, what did you get me today? What do you yeah. do? Cause if you don't give them anything to work with, you know, it's like hiring a PR company when you have nothing going on Yeah. and they're, you're like, get me an article. And they're like, well, what are you doing? And you're like, well, nothing as opposed to like, Hey, can you send my podcast to these people? Or, Hey, can you mm-hmm. uh, promote my web series over here? Or like th- whatever, like you, you just need to be doing stuff on your own. I mean, I I don't know what it was like back in the days before the internet, but I think the internet has definitely made it. So like you said, you have to be good at more than just one thing. Mm -hmm. I worked with a lot of like so-called R and B divas and people always wanted like stories. Uh Like, were they, how were they, were they nasty? Were they crazy? And like, no, they were all cool. They all just showed up, like did the work. It's like the people who are super successful have that pleasant and they're, hardworking like those are it seems so like uh basic but it's true like that's what people want to spend time with 
And you tend to find the people in the middle rung who never quite make it usually are where the divas are. It's like one level below the actual divas is where the diva dumb kind of like yes. hangs out, you know? Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Yeah. I mean, you do hear horror stories about certain people in our industry where you're yeah. just like, oh, that sucks. But yeah, for for the most part, I think uh, I think you're definitely right. And we've watched so many movies where like the antagonist is like the person or like the celebrities like throwing pencils at people, and it's like, and you're like, oh, that's what it must be like. And but it's never. I've never met a person like that personally, who was successful. Yeah. And maybe in the '80s, where like it all didn't get leaked out, and you could be a diva behind the scenes and have great PR to like you know push it out. But today, everything's so transparent. Like we know everything about everyone. You're being recorded all the time. So just be a good person. Yeah. Yeah. Attitude determines your altitude. I know it's cheesy, but. Hey, sometimes cheesy is correct. Uh, we do talk a lot about goals on the pod. Like what are some of your goals for 2020? I know it's a weird uh, year <laughs> to have goals. So you can kick it forward to 2021. Oh, I don't 2021. have any goals. Yeah. I have no not goals. Not get Corona. Yeah, um, yeah not get Corona. Um, oh, God. Yeah, it's it's hard to have goals right now, I'll be honest, because before that's why you become a stand up because you want to create and you want to be in control of what you do. And usually you can be you're like, okay, I got to a certain level. Now I can work whenever I want to. And if I don't want to go to Florida, I don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I probably still will, because I'm broken inside and I need to <laughs> perform everywhere. But um yeah, now it's, it's hard. I guess, I guess my goals for 2020 are more, um, personal than professional. I mean, professionally, I would like to get better at making a living, not on the road. Mm. Um, just so that I'm not relying on that solely because before this, I was like, that is never going away. I'm like live, like touring is never going away. No one thought it was going away, you know? Nobody thought it was going away. And now that that's gone, I'm like, all right, I guess we'll, we'll figure it out. So I, I hope that this year, um, I finish some projects and, and write some things that I'm proud of. And I hope that I become a more, uh, Zen person because this has been a true, I mean, a, truly a test for those of us who have control issues mm -hmm. because I've never felt less in control in my entire life. And I think that's probably good for me. This is like exposure therapy right? <laughs> where at the beginning of all this, I was like trying to get my family to be as careful as possible. And some of them are, and some of them aren't mm -hmm. depending on, you know, whatever. I mean, I, most of my family has not stopped working. Like none, none of my family was like in California or, in California, mm. a lot of them are like either in areas that aren't hit as bad or they're essential workers. Mm -hmm. And my feeling was like, everybody just stop working. Like, it'll be fine in a few months. Just everyone stop working. And they're like, we can't. Like, that's yeah. not a thing. And I'm like, it is like, just I'll help you. Like, it's fine. And they were like, no, like we, everybody wishes they could just stop working. We're not just going to do that. Mm -hmm. And also, and it's smart because, you know, at the time I was like, what are you doing? You're crazy. And now I'm like, man, this is going on so much longer than I thought. And it's going to be so hard to find a job after this that, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably smarter to, to keep your job if you can and, and adjust accordingly with safety measures. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been really tough. I mean, there were, there were a few weeks where I was just like, I don't know. I don't know how to handle the fact that I can't keep everybody I care about safe. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, Sam got sick with not COVID while we were just, we'd been inside for two months. We had gone like nowhere. We had gone to yeah. the grocery store every 10 days and he got the flu for like 36 hours. Oh, how scary is that? And I was that? on the phone with doctor. Oh my God. I was on the phone oh with doctors God. like, I guess this is it. Like yeah. I just, and they're like, all right, well we can, you know, we can test him tomorrow if yeah. you want, if he's not better. And then thank God he woke up the next day and didn't have a fever and was just like exhausted, but felt a lot better. And then the next day was fine. Um, but that happening made me go, 
Cause I, t- again, I talked to doctors and they were like, you know, there's other stuff still going around mm-hmm. that isn't COVID. They're like, yeah. just cause you're sick doesn't mean you have that. Um, and I've heard of other people who like got sick, got tested and they were negative and you're like, Oh cool. So you can get sick that way too. And yeah. it just made me think like, <laughs> Oh, we're on the road all the time. Like I used to drive so much. I'm not driving at all. Like I, there's always a chance yeah. that you're going to get really sick with something or, um, you know, die in a wreck or like what, whatever. Yeah, like, regular there's just always a could risk. kill you. Exactly. And like, again, he was so sick. I've never seen him that sick. And I yeah. was like, my first reaction was, I I would have thought that my first reaction would have been we have to lock down even harder, Mm -hmm. but because we had been so careful and like nobody else in my family has been sick Mm -hmm. and they've all been working and fine. And I'm like, okay, at a certain point, you're just going to go, we're going to do what we can do. Yeah. And if we get sick, we'll deal with it, I guess, and just see what happens. But nobody can go like, Oh, if I do these five things, I won't die until I'm a hundred. Like you just don't know. So, um, I think that in a weird way sort of freed me a little bit from this like debilitating fear of just like, Oh, if we do the wrong thing, we're going to get it. It's like, even if you are as careful as humanly possible, something could happen. You could just get it at the grocery store or whatever. So I'm, again, we're being so insanely careful. Like we are not, I have not been within six feet of anybody, Mm -hmm. but Sam for the last three months, but yeah, I th- I think that's my main goal. That's a very long winded answer. I'm sorry, but that's that's probably my main goal. Probably my main goal for this year is to just uh, diversify my ego. Is that what they say? <laughs> like learn some other shit. That's the name of your next and special. Then, ah, that's good. And then uh, and then to also just like relinquish control yeah, that yeah, I don't yeah. have. There is I no, never have. There's no more cert- Like this proves there's no certainty. No matter when we open yeah. up. No matter what happens. You can wash every FedEx package you can like scrub your broccoli but like it you're gonna if you get it you get it and it's scary and you just gotta try, try and stay healthy don't drink too much you know uh eat the right foods work out like build your immune system the best you can and you know we're all we're all yeah. out there uh you did say something earlier that I wanted to touch on which was the live touring aspect like a lot of LA and Hollywood's businesses are like uh yeah it's fine you're giving that away but you'll tour like, oh, your album won't sell, but you'll tour. But So the whole yes. thing is, but you'll tour. And then they're like, no, that's not going to yep. happen. Yep. And so now Absolutely. it's, it's got to be like, okay, but you'll Patreon, but you'll, it has to be something else. And I think you're super smart for like trying to adjust that mix. If that mix was heavy for you on the touring side, and it is for like a lot of musicians, artists all around the world, having to adjust that back to be like, okay, no, we need assets and revenue in other places. Yeah. I mean, that's what you, you put out a special so you can tour yeah. and you spend a lot of the money you made from the special promoting that special yeah, 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 so that you can like recoup it on the road. And, uh, yeah, I don't think people know that unless they're in entertainment, they just think like, Oh, you're on TV. Everything's great. Like I had families members making weird comments to me in the last few years. Like just when I was on TV <laughs> once where yeah, they're like, yeah. well, I guess you have a bunch of money now. And I'm like, I, I, I made like $300 for that TV appearance. Like, you know what I mean? You're like, that was groceries this month. Um, So, you know, not to get too boring and talk too much about money, but, uh, but yeah, it is, it is weird. And it is, uh, it's great. Bill Maher had this great tweet where he was like, half of uh, America is at home ordering Postmates and the other half is delivering it. And so like, yeah, we're also stuck in that too thing where like some, for some people it's like, it's okay. They're just at home for a while. It's no big deal. And for others, like, like you said, like I have to work like for, I need the income, but it's also mental health. It's all these other things that come from working and having a job and, and being out there. Cause you don't want like yeah. things like scary things like suicides and people getting depressed and all these things can rise when you're just stuck at home and not having any money. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, one thing I wanted to ask you is uh, I checked out your website. I tried to do a little bit of research on the guest before, even if I know them like you. Uh, you don't so have a bio. What's that? So professional. I don't have a bio? You don't have a bio on your site. And I, I love maybe that I couldn't oh, find it. I didn't know that. And I was now like, I'm like, let me look at my I thought that was great. Website. I thought it was so clean. You're like, here I am. Look at it. You know what is? You know what you're getting into. 
Oh, that's good. Okay, I'm glad. I, I thought I had a bio up. So that's just me being bad at websiting. Um, I hate writing bios so much. Yeah. I mean, when I write my own, they're very short and not that good. I'm just like, why don't you just list, just go to like, I think everyone's bio should just be like a link to their IMDb. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then like a link to their podcast. And, and that's but, what, totally because you don't, it's almost like the old way of like having a site that's like your bio and your headshot. Just make it a bit more like you can find everything. You Google it. It's all there. Google is your bio in a way. So if you Google it, it comes up like this is what I'm about. You know? Yeah. I, I struggled with it. I ended up putting a short bio on my site, but like I struggled with it for a long time. I didn't have a bio. So I was kind of bonding. with. I was like, she doesn't have a bio too. She gets it. <laughs> I mean, I just hate it. I just, and it does feel a little dated. Yeah, yeah. To write about yourself in the third person. Uh oh, sorry. Okay. Um, my agent was calling me. <laughs> so Hollywood. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's. Yeah. Yeah. I, I. I hate it so much when they ask for bios. Like a lot of times, I'll look at comedy clubs' websites mm-hmm. for my dates, and I'll go, "Who wrote this?" Yeah. And it's just someone. You know, it was like my old manager wrote it six years ago, and this is what they found online somehow, or this is what got emailed to them. <laughs> and so, they're a lot of times they're so bad where I'm just like, "Oh, who called me the voice of my generation?" Like this yeah. is a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, they just copied and pasted onto the club site. Yeah. 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 And you started off in, uh, I don't know if biblical comedy is the right word, but like. Oh, God. Um, I hope not. I started off in churches, yeah, when churches. I was a teenager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also worked for a lot of Christian uh, music labels. Oh, did you? Yeah. And it's funny how I feel like those worlds like exist like on the periphery. There's yes. so much money in them. And like. So all, much money. Nobody knows they even are there. Like yeah. the label I worked for, I think it was the highest grossing uh, subsidiary of EMI Music at the time, and like nobody knew the band, like no, like know the mainstream. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Like if you can't steal the music, you know, for God reasons and all that. But uh, <laughs> I always found it like this. I'm glad I got into that world for a little bit because you like you can kind of see how it works. You know, like oh, this is nice, and they're just doing their own thing. Totally don't care about the mainstream. It's wild. Oh yeah. It's helpful. It's helpful when the industry is like not paying attention to you to know that there are other, like you said, like other spheres that are happening. I mean, I did like, I want to say I did like seven or eight, uh, cruise ship gigs in like one year. It was a nightmare. So horrible, but it was helpful to just go on those cruise ships and go like meet these guys who are in their fifties, sixties, some of them forties who just only do that. They're just always on a ship. They have their routine. They have their bits that they do about Haiti, like the port we're in, like they're, (laughs) you know, like they're just doing it. And some of them really love it. And it makes you go, okay, I don't want to do this, but they're still doing a version of what I do. Yeah. And they found another way to do it. And like, like we said, there's corporates, there's guys who just do corporates, there's people who only do cruise ships, there's people who just do churches. And uh, honestly, if you're a church comedian right now, you're that's you're probably still performing, so good on you. Um, those are some of the first places you can perform in, probably. But uh, yeah, it's, it's helpful to know that it's not just like, okay, you have to make it here, mm-hmm. or you can't do what you love. Right. Like, there are different ways to do what you love. Um and different, you know, there are different holes you can fit into. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not all like, if you're a square peg, there are square holes. Oh, yeah, You don't definitely. have to be forcing it into right. the round one. And it's also that like... Is, uh, Hollywood. Yeah, totally. And there's not one path. Like, I think we're always pitched, like, there's one path. Like, you do this, you do that, you get this. If you don't have this by then, you, you're a failure. But like there isn't, there's a lot of yeah. different paths you can take. You can start here, you can grow here. And as long as you're growing and getting better, like people find you and you start to, uh, doors open, you're a cool person, all these things happen. And, uh, seeing these like other markets or like different people exist, like on a cruise ship and all these things, it's, it's so important to like know that it's, everything is a lot bigger than what we're pitched. We're pitched like the tip of the iceberg. It's like, it's just Netflix. It's just these things and they're all great and they're all important. But you can be um, successful in other areas and get to that later, you know? 
Yeah, and the industry is always changing is the other thing. I mean, having a Netflix special wasn't a dream of mine when I was a child because right. Netflix didn't exist. Oh, you know, like yeah. It, you know, my dream was like to have a Comedy Central half hour. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I like got on Netflix before that. And I think I got offered the half hour the same year that I got offered the 15 on Netflix. And it was crazy to be like, oh, I wanted this since I was a kid and I'm not going to do it so that I can do this other thing mm -hmm. that I didn't even know was going to exist. So that's kind of a nice reassuring thing. Um, and also just talking to people in this industry. I mean, there are so many people who used to do stand up and now they write or yeah, they yeah. used to write and now they do stand up or they used to do stand up and now they just act or whatever. Like people are always reinventing themselves and um, pivoting and changing it up without uh, a pandemic. So it's, yeah. <laughs> it's very reassuring to, to talk to people you look up to who go like, no, I actually like producing just as much as this other thing. I just didn't know until I did it right. or I took six months or a year off of stand up for personal reasons or to do this other thing professionally. And I got back to it and I'm still fine. Like when you become so focused on one thing, mm -hmm. which I have been, you kind of like shut yourself off to other opportunities. And this is forcing people to open themselves up to those opportunities now. Totally. You are focused. I remember you came to the comedy bunker, like for, I think from downtown to the comedy bunker, then back to dynasty typewriter in one night, yeah. which was like, that was, that was a drive. I was like, wow, you were out there grinding it. It was a lot. And then I had a flight in the morning. And you had a, oh my God. <laughs> Taking time off stand up is also like, I think it's gonna be good for everybody because you're gonna come back and be like, oh, it's not the end of the world that I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. You'll get the, you'll get yeah. the muscle back. Yeah. And we all, we'll all just be like a little rusty for a while. And it is scary. Like I'm just thinking about going back on stage right now, I'm honestly terrified yeah, as much yeah. as I want to do it. But like the longest I've taken off of stand up was like 10 days when I went on a trip to England, like when I was 22 or something with my family. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming back and feeling so rusty and being like, Oh my gosh, never again. This is so hard to get back to it. And so I don't know what it's going to be like after yeah. months of not going up. I mean, I'm definitely gonna have to like practice in the bathroom mirror. It's gonna be bad. Oh yeah, get the hairbrush out or whatever and just, Oh, are you gonna carry your own mic? Probably, right? We probably should. I mean, that'll be weird, like mid show to be like, and this is what we do now. But I guess people will get I it. I guess maybe the host will do it. Oh yeah. Or, the, you know, be... they should almost have them like do it off stage, like wireless and be like, or a new cap on it. And then you walk on stage oh. with the mic. That's a good idea. Look at us. Yeah, we, we just solved Fixing it. Done. everything. <laughs> that's a great idea. That's what, yeah, that's like what they do at corporates already where they're like, here's your wireless mic. Yeah. They're going to introduce you. Everyone has their own. Like, yeah, that's totally. Yeah, because I have I have touched the mic to my face by accident after someone who yeah. got off was like, and I'm sick, good night. And then you're like, oh, and you're like, try it. And then he, it was like something you don't want to do because you don't want to do, you end up doing it. And then, uh, yes. and now it's just going to be, that's all you're going to think about for like your set is like, oh, I touched the mic, my lips, my lips. I know. Yeah. Well, it's such a bad habit to have it like in front of your mouth. I, I definitely did that for a long time until I started watching tapes of myself and I was like, oh, I got to like bring it down and oh, it's yeah. fine. You and I feel like here. this will really, yeah. Yeah. Now we'll really get rid of that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I remember I, I told my friend, I was like, I'll give you 10 bucks if I, if you uh, just watch me. I make sure I don't have it like below my face. It's like if I bring it up below nice. above my chin one time, I owe you ten bucks. Uh, Cause yeah, I started out definitely do? doing. I did. I I'm, I passed. So I didn't know I'm ten bucks, but nice. Yeah, cause you ha, being down here, you can see the face, you can see everything. It's a lot yeah. more connect. It's one less thing between you and the audience. You know, like what if I we were just doing this? It'd just be weird, right? Like yeah, dude, they just can't see your mouth. Um, is acting in one of your, uh, your goals coming up, like sitcom, that type of, uh, career path? Yeah. I mean, that's always, yeah, that's always a goal. Uh, but again, that's something where it's like, is anything going to be filming till next year? Right. Well, apparently they Everything opened that I'm up. Everything I'm being told is. That was one of the things mean? like how, uh, LA opened up for filming in some capacity. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's an essential business, I Who's guess. Who's filming right now? I mean, I don't know. If when they, did they do that? It was like last couple of days. Oh, really? I missed that. Yeah, yeah. So 
I don't know so if I can that... tell I'm in my like don't read news like phase or you know every few days you get like really overwhelmed yeah you're like okay I'm just gonna not look at it for a minute I try like, not to watch it real time where we like... don't oh like I'll log on to Go like ahead, the paper website and like read today's paper and I'm not gonna click on the yes. clickbait or any of that stuff and I'm like okay this it's not that bad there's like four articles on what you need to know and then you keep them if you click on the clickbait it's always like uh I wouldn't mind some uh, outlawing clickbait laws, to be honest. Like, I know, seriously. It's so like, it has nothing. You click on it, and it's like nothing to do with what you clicked on. Like, and it's all just yeah. to get like three cents out of me. Yeah, it's it's pretty rough. It's sad. Yeah, I like when I like getting like the emails from the New York Times that are just like, here's everything you need to know. Oh yeah, that's why I get like, to. Okay, yeah, thank yeah you. I go to the New York Times, the, yeah. the today's paper. I click on that, and I'm like, all right, I think I got enough. But then New York was so scary for a while too. So. I felt yeah. bad for all them. Well, Taylor, this yeah. has been great. I really appreciate you doing the pod and taking the time here on this uh, crazy quarantine to do it. Um, you have your of pod course. recording coming up now with uh, mm -hmm. your friends for Self Helpless. So where do people find you on the internet and et cetera to follow you if they don't already know, which I can't um, believe they won't. <laughs> at Taylor Tomlinson on all of social media. My website's ttomcomedy.com, but that'll just send you to all my social media ttomcomedy.com check it out check out our podcast self helpless <laughs> subscribe to the patreon it's totally worth it and uh, i can't wait to see you in the flesh and do a show all that fun stuff so stay safe oh, me too and uh, you too buddy i'll talk to you soon bye